Before the recent U.S.-China trade war, most people probably had no idea just how dominant China is in global rare earth production. These elements are crucial for making things like tanks, drones, electric vehicles, and even robots. Today, China holds about 36% of the world's rare earth deposits, which may not sound like that impressive. But guess what? China actually produces over 95% of the world's usable rare earth. Yeah, that's a lot. It uh, wasn't always like this. Back in the 1970s, the U.S. was actually the world leader in rare earth production. But then, China caught up. In this video, let's talk about Dr. Xu Guangxian, the man known as the father of China's rare earth industry. Uh, but first, a quick geology lesson. Rare earth are actually not that rare, and they're not really earth either. They are these 17 elements on the periodic table, usually in form of metals. While these metals are relatively abundant on our planet, they are considered rare because they are notoriously difficult to extract from other elements. For example, it's easy to find a big rock that contains dysprosium, one of the rare earths. But extracting pure dysprosium from that rock is really difficult. Xu Guangxian is the man who pioneered that extraction technology in China. Xu Guangxian was born in 1920 into a well-to-do family in Zhejiang province. In 1944, he graduated from Shanghai Jiao Tong University with a degree in chemistry. In 1946, Xu married his fellow chemistry classmate Gao Xiaoxia. The following year, they both passed the national examination to study in the United States. However, due to financial difficulties, only Xu was able to go. He started at Washington University in St. Louis before transferring to Columbia University's chemistry department. In 1949, Gao Xiaoxia joined her husband in the U.S. and entered the chemistry department of New York University. Xu received his Ph.D. in 1951 under the supervision of Professor Charles O. Beckman. His thesis focused on optically active quantum chemical theory. His wife, Gao, was also doing quite well. She had earned a master's degree and was working toward her own PhD. Meanwhile, in China, the communists had taken control of the entire country, except Taiwan. In October 1950, China entered the Korean War, fighting on the opposite side of the United States. By all expectations, Xu and Gao would have stayed in the United States and built successful academic careers there. But the couple had different plans. They wanted to use their knowledge to help rebuild their war-torn homeland. On April 15, 1951, the couple left for China aboard the USS General Gordon, one of the last three cruisers to depart for China before the U.S. banned all civilian travel to that country. After returning to China, Xu became a professor in the Department of Chemistry 
at Peking University. His wife, Gao, also joined the faculty there. Xu's early work focused on quantum chemistry and chemical bonding theory. More specifically, he studied how and why these chemically similar elements on the periodic table are formed. In 1956, Xu was assigned to lead Peking University's Department of Radiation Chemistry. In that role, he participated in China's nuclear weapon development program. More specifically, he conducted research on the separation of uranium-235 and uranium-238. As we know, uranium is a key component in nuclear weapons. In 1966, the disastrous Cultural Revolution swept through China. As intellectuals with overseas study experience, both Xu and his wife Gao were persecuted. They were sent to a labor camp. Sometimes I, I, I can't help but wonder, during those years of hard manual labor, did these America-educated, world-class scientists ever regret their decision to return to their beloved homeland? Compared to many other scientists who perished during the Cultural Revolution, Xu and Gao were relatively lucky. Their expertise was highly valued by the government. In 1972, four years before the official end of the Cultural Revolution, they were allowed to return to Peking University to resume their academic work. The government assigned Xu to conduct research on rare earth extraction. By then, Xu had been working in China for 20 years. Over that time, he had to change his research focus several times. Not necessarily out of intellectual curiosity, but in response to the needs of the country he served. Fortunately for Xu, with this shift to rare earth, he really hit the jackpot. By the mid-20th century, it was already known that China had one of the world's largest reserves of rare earth, about 36% of the global total. And these rare earths are becoming increasingly vital for high-tech devices. However, back then, China lacked the necessary know-how to extract these rare earths from other minerals. Until the 1980s, China would dig up minerals from its mines, sell them to overseas factories for processing, and then buy back the extracted rare earth elements. After many years of research, Xu's lab developed the so-called counter-current extraction method. I won't pretend to fully understand all its technicalities. All we need to know is that Xu's method is incredibly efficient. It can extract rare earth elements from other minerals much faster and cheaper than previous methods. Had Xu worked for a modern Chinese research lab today, he could have easily patented his research and made tons of money from it. But it was Peking University in the 1970s and 1980s. Making money wasn't on people's mind. Xu selflessly shared his methods with technicians at state-owned enterprises. 
allowing even small county level factories to master his cutting edge techniques. Oh, and uh, of course, as a professor at Peking University, he also educated younger generation of chemists, many of whom would later make new breakthroughs in China's rare earth research. Thanks to the work of Xu and his students, China quickly became the world's largest producer of rare earth. Rare earths from China became so affordable that nearly all other major producers decided to exit the market. And that's why today in 2025, China produces over 95% of the global supply of rare earths. I want to end this video by highlighting Gao Xiaoxia, Xu Guangxian's wife. As we saw, in 1972, the couple returned to Peking University to continue their research and teaching. Gao was an outstanding chemist in her own right. One of her major achievements was to significantly increase the reutilization rate of rare earth waste. She also made important contributions to developing instruments for China's first air pollution monitoring station. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.